Welcome, travelers, to my realm of nightmares. Allow me to be your personal assistant. Come in, take a seat, get comfortable. For when you step into my realm, there's no stepping out. Hello, travelers. PA Nightmares here. I've noticed that over 30% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel. So, if you're a new or returning viewer and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you like what I do, liking the video and commenting as well, as it really helps push this video onto the algorithm and it really does help the channel grow. Well, I've taken enough of your time. On to the main event. Hey, it's the Pizza Man again. Hope you all saw the last post that Nick made. Since the incident in the forest, I have been released from the hospital. Thankfully, the creatures didn't cause any permanent damage. It just took some bandages to heal the wounds. And my leg was put in a cast. Although, getting used to those crutches has been a pain in the ass. Nick had to help me up several times when I've lost my balance and fallen on my face. Speaking of Nick, he's actually moved in with me. We got to talking some more since the last post, and it turns out he actually had been kicked out by his parents. The reason for it was because he got kicked out of his college. It was because of some other students who he had problems with claimed he was harassing them. Those students had been going to that college for years and were well liked by everyone. So everyone believed them over Nick. He got a call from his dad who berated him over what had happened. Apparently his dad and mom believed the school and the other students over their own son. Great parents, right? Nick was told by his dad not to bother coming home for a place to stay. Then, shortly after, Nick found out his number had been blocked by them. He didn't see them again at the funeral, but he didn't bother talking to them, and they didn't bother speaking with him. Since Nick had been banned from his home, he had been drifting from place to place. He would stay at the cheapest motels he could find. Sometimes, he would even sleep in his car. Truth be told, he was just about out of money when he returned to my town. I normally wouldn't share information so personal, but I figured you'd all be wondering why Nick decided to move here, of all places. I asked him if it was okay to tell you all this, and he said it was. I managed to get him an interview at Formaggio's. According to Nick, it went something like this. Have you had any experience in this kind of restaurant? Mr. Formaggio asked Nick. I've worked for Domino's for a couple of years. Good enough, you're hired. So now, he and I are working together. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. I've been back to work since the last post, mostly to show Nick the ropes. Because of my injury, there are a few conditions in regards to my going to work. For one, I can only head to work when it's day out, and I have to be off before dark. If I'm working alone, I'm closing with someone. I can stay to help them close, and lastly, if there's any fog or thunderstorms out, I get the day off. But I want to talk about something that happened on Thursday, because what occurred, I have never seen nor heard about. Nick and I were at Formaggio's. It was later in the day, and most of the customers were heading home. The only customers we had left were Chuck and Sam, who were getting ready for their night patrol. Should I tell them the leaves were closing? Nick asked me. Nah, they're cool. Hey, Pete. I don't think we've been introduced to your new friend here. I think I overheard your name is Nick, right? Chuck asked him. Yeah, it's nice to meet you, Chuck. Nick said, reading the badge. They shook hands. Then Nick did the same thing with Sam. They all chatted for a little bit before I told Nick we needed to get busy closing. After telling us bye, Chuck and Sam left. Then Nick and I got closing. Fortunately, there are plenty of counters and such for me to use in order to get around. So I didn't have too much trouble. Nick learned pretty quick. I showed him how to shut off and clean the ovens and dishes, and where to store food in the walk-in fridge. He had taken out the trash, and I was counting to see how many of which ingredient we had left, and which ones we would need to buy. I was halfway done counting, 
when Nick called me from the dining room, Hey, Pete, can you tell me what the hell this is? It's probably just some, I was about to say, until I saw what Nick was looking at. Up in the sky, far ahead of us, was a swirling rainbow color mass, which was hovering above the forest in the distance. Ever seen anything like this before? No, I've never heard about anything like this. I haven't even seen it in my book. Think it's dangerous? Don't know. Wait, I think the thing is hovering over Carl's house. Take a picture or something of that thing. I'm going to call Carl's shop. What happens if something comes out of that thing and attacks us? We'll make a break for it. I called Carl and he picked up on the first couple of rings. Pete, what's up? Carl, where are you right now? Just in the back of my store. About to close up. Why, need something? Look outside towards your property. He did as I asked. What the fuck? How long has that thing been there? Not sure, Nick. And I just noticed it. We didn't see it before, so I'm guessing it just appeared tonight. Hmm. Chuck and the others have probably noticed it already, but I think I'll call them anyway. Have you seen any creatures yet? Huh. Actually, we haven't come to think of it. They usually start coming out at this time. Do you think the thing in the sky has something to do with it? Before he could answer, the thing in the sky slammed to the ground. The impact could be heard all across town. The fuck? You see what that thing just did? Yeah, I... Oh, shit! Something came swimming towards the restaurant. Said thing was a giant worm creature. Its mouth was circular with sharp teeth. The face had multiple eyes, matching the rainbow color of the thing that was in the sky. Please tell me the restaurant has the rooms to keep that thing back. Pete, everything all right? Carl asked. We're going to need some help here. I said, seeing multiple returned and other creatures also coming towards the restaurant. Don't worry, I'll be there as soon as possible. Carl said before I heard a loud crash come from his end and the call went dead. Carl? Carl! I yelled. How shit, something happened to him, didn't it? Looks like it. Does that mean he's... I don't know. I hope not. Carl's tough. We have to believe he'll pull through. Where does that leave us, then? The worm thing could be here at any moment. Call the department. Once they hear about what happened, they'll come here. Nick called and told them about the situation. They told him that they were on their way, but it would be a while since there were a lot of creatures. I said it's going to take like 10 minutes. We'll just have to hope we can survive until then. Look under the counter. You'll find some weapons. Jesus Christ, look at all these guns. Yeah, toss me a shotgun and a box of shells. Quickly, now. I said as the worm was now quickly slithering over towards us. I quickly loaded and cocked the gun as it started to rear its head back. As it started to strike, I threw the door open and gave it a shot to the face. It was knocked back and it returned tried to take the opportunity to rush me. I knocked it back with the butt of the gun, then quickly closed the door. He almost let one of them in. I didn't have a choice. If that thing breaks the glass, they'll all be able to get in. I thought the runes are supposed to keep them back. They do, but opening the door creates an opening in the barrier. Obviously, we can't exactly draw runes in midair. Now, do me a favor. Before the worm thing recovers, you ever shoot a gun? A few times. Grab a gun and ammo, then head up to the roof and start firing at those things. I'll meet you up there in just a second. We don't get paid enough for this, he said, climbing the ladder to the roof hatch. I had to shoot the worm thing again, and several returns before Nick started firing. When he did, I leapt over to the ladder, then made my way up. I saw several winged creatures descending towards Nick, and shot them all back. Well, I didn't even notice them. Thanks, Pete. Don't mention it. Just keep shooting. I got the other side of the building covered. The worm and other creatures continued attacking for the next five minutes. We heard other gunshots coming from different parts of town. One of the flying creatures managed to get past me, then sank its teeth into Nick's ribs. Ow, you motherfucker. You piece of shit. He said, pulling a knife and stabbing out both of its eyes. He aimed his shotgun at it, then blew its head off. Sorry, Nick. I was reloading. Oh, shit. I said. I looked up to see another winged creature descending towards me. I was able to block its attack but it started to lift me by the gun I held. 
I thought quickly, pulling out a knife and stabbing in its neck. Seeing as how the creatures that attacked us were dead, save for the worm, we decided to train our guns on it. Unfortunately, we were met with the sound of clicks when we pulled the triggers. Is, this, is there any more ammo down below? I asked. No, I grabbed all the ammo we had when I came up here. Should I grab the handguns? They won't do any good against this thing. Then, what are we going to do? It's getting ready to attack again. The worm got ready to attack again. When it was knocked back once more, we looked over to see Carl with his gun pointed at the beast. He ran over and tossed something in its mouth. Then, he ran away from it fast as he could. What happened next was the worm's head blew up. Bits of blue blood rained down from the sky. Ew, some of it got in my mouth, Nick said, spitting. Never mind that. We had bigger problems. Look. The explosion had attracted another horde of creatures who swarmed towards Carl. He was able to hold them off for a little while, but eventually it looked as if he would be overpowered. Thankfully, Chuck and Sam arrived just in time. They took out the other creatures. Thank fucking Christ, Nick said. You said it. Let's head back down. Shortly later, the five of us were sitting at one of the tables. I asked Carl what had happened, and he said that a creature he hadn't seen before smashed through the store window and grabbed him, but he was able to break free and kill it. Chuck apologized for taking so long, and said they've been dealing with calls all night. They told Nick and me to stay safe before he and Sam left. When he did, I asked Carl, By the way, how did you make that thing's head explode? <laughs> Grenade. What? How did you get a... Don't worry about it. You got the job done, right? True. Nina left home. I looked at Nick. Uh, no thanks. My car luckily didn't get damaged. Alright then. Can't believe I have to get my store's windows replaced. And I redrew them runes on it. What a pain in the ass. Anyway, take care you two. Take care, and thanks Carl, I said. Don't mention it, and oh Nick. Carl asked as he was almost at the door. What is it? Carl pointed at me, then said, Make sure you have his back. Nick smiled and said, Yeah, yeah you got it. We locked up and went home after Carl left. On the way home, we saw twice as many police cars as usual out, and more creatures we haven't seen before. Nick and I are lucky to have survived our encounter, and he was fortunate enough to only need some rubbing alcohol and a few bandages on the spot where the creature bit him. I don't know why that thing in the sky appeared, or how these new creatures are presumably connected to it, but we are going to get to the bottom of this. Knowing Carl, he'll probably try to investigate whatever it was that landed near his property. I'll call him tomorrow to see what he's found out, then Nick and I will go to his house later this week. I just hope he doesn't get himself killed. And I hope they don't run into one of those tall cunts again. See y'all again soon. This is Pete's Pete. Signing out. I would like to thank tonight's author or authors for allowing me to use their works. If you enjoyed this, the author's links will be in the description below. Please check them out and let them know PA sent you. Also, if you'd like to walk around representing my realm and gaining new travelers, the links to my merch store, my website, and all my other social medias will be in the description below. As always, I'd like to say a special thank you to all my lovely Patreons. All of their names will appear on screen. I'll make sure to put all their links into the description below so you guys can check them out as well if you'd like. But as always, travelers, once you step into my realm, there's no... Stepping. Ah.